the killer instinct, a trait that would propel us blindly into herds of potentially life-threatening prey unmatched and outnumbered against thousands of hooves, antlers, and teeth, with only basic weaponry at our sides and the mindset of kill and eat or die. Fast forward past the agricultural revolution, the Bronze Age, the first civilizations, the Crusades, the Renaissance, the moon landing, the World Wide Web, to now. Have we lost the same killer instinct that ensured the against-all-odds success of our early ancestors? Or is it still there, in waiting for the prime moment to strike? We can assure you that it is. Deep down, silently residing in the code of our DNA is a killer, like a stalking lion in the tall grass. However, it's become almost un-PC to talk about having and thriving off an innate killer instinct. Do you openly discuss yours? Nowadays, it's far easier to use such words and phrases as committed, dedicated, or sticking to your process. In this video, we're going to define, dissect, and discuss unleashing your intrinsic killer instinct. Welcome to ALUX. Thankfully, due to the early success of our ancestors, the majority of us no longer have to hunt and gather to survive. So it's pretty easy for that killer instinct to lay dormant in our day-to-day -day hustle and bustle. But that doesn't mean we should forget about it entirely. After all, the Oxford Dictionary merely defines the killer instinct as a ruthless determination to succeed or win. And we agree that the key to winning is by harnessing your killer instinct. To compare, we're going to use two types of motor racing drivers as an example of those who have and have not harnessed their killer instinct. Let's call them pacers and racers. Pacers are a group of drivers that have not fully harnessed and unleashed their killer instinct. Racers are a group of drivers who have. Of course, everybody likes to win. But the difference is that pacers want to win, and racers have to win almost by any means necessary. Pacers dislike losing, whereas racers despise losing. Next time you tune into Formula One or NASCAR, study the interviews of those who didn't finish in first place. They will either be slightly disheartened yet content with their runner-up position, or they'll almost be distraught with grief and disappointment, as if, for them, losing was not an option. For pacers, winning is an excellent outcome. For racers, winning is the only acceptable outcome. To racers, winning is critical. The unmitigated necessity of winning and the sheer hatred of losing are what propels them to success. To make certain that all meticulous planning and relentless preparation are in place to push their performance to the highest possible level to win. That is someone who has harnessed their killer instinct. But this begs the follow-up question, is it healthy to always display that killer instinct? Because let's be real here, competition, whether at a high professional level or at the low level of a recreational hobby, is always present, and it's often difficult to determine when the killer instinct can or should be unleashed. People will argue that displaying a killer instinct while playing a game of soccer at a company team-building barbecue is a bit excessive. This is really for you to decide. But regularly ask yourself the question, am I here to have fun or am I here to win? You may come to find the soccer game can be enjoyed more by all if it weren't taken too seriously. Winning doesn't matter here, everybody is more concerned about what's on the grill. However, when it's back at the office or the drawing board and the eyes are on you to perform at a high level, especially when the competition is the same guy that's scored by fluke at the company barbecue, it is killer instinct time. The fun is over and you are here to win. 
choose your battles, and when the battle is chosen, give it everything you've got. And just like choosing your battles, it's also paramount to choose the right moment. In some cases, your killer instinct must be present for an extended period of time. That merciless momentum can drive you for days while building up a presentation or developing an idea. It comes and goes in waves, but it's always there as you push to complete a task by a certain deadline. But sometimes, just like for that lion in the grass, there's a heightened and perfect moment to strike and an optimal way to do it. And getting it right the first time can be a challenge. Now, this might seem like a little far off from the killer instinct mentality, but trust us here for a sec. Do you remember the first time you tried to flip a pancake in a frying pan? Unless you're superhuman or something, there were probably a lot of mistakes and a lot of inedible pancakes. With the first attempt, perhaps you were slightly concerned about sending the pancake too high and creating an aerial kitchen disaster. Thus, the result was that the pancake barely left the pan. It instead just kind of folded over on itself. With the second attempt, perhaps you gave it a little too much confidence and sent the pancake into the air, consequently missing the pan entirely while creating a new stovetop decoration at the same time. Finally, when you actually nailed the flip, you may have realized you performed it too late, revealing a lovely burnt underside to an otherwise perfect pancake. Learning to flip a perfect pancake seems easy, but there's something more profound to it. First, it's about using your experience and intuitiveness to choose the right moment to flip. Then, using a lot of confidence and without excessive force, the pancake is flipped while maintaining a level of focus that allows the perfect pan catch without spillage. Yes, this requires practice, patience, and more practice. But by recreating this system over and over again, your pancake flipping, at some point, becomes infallible. Knowing the right time, along with a precise method of execution, are key components of a successful killer instinct. And this system can be applied to a much larger scale. Whether it be throwing a spear, pouncing on a gazelle, writing an article, nailing a presentation, or driving a race car. But this requires plenty of time. Will there be failures and obstacles on the path of developing and refining a killer instinct? Of course there'll be. But they're only failures if you allow them to be. Just take a look at Thomas Edison, clearly one of the most respected businessmen and inventors of all time. A man with a stoic attitude and a truly killer instinct mindset. Is he remembered for being a failure? He certainly failed at creating a light bulb many more times than he succeeded. It was 10,000 failures to one success. But that one success changed the world forever. And they can't be considered failures if they lead to the ultimate win, right? After all, as he once famously said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. Obstacles and emotions will also play a huge role in developing your killer instinct. The road will not always be clear and the traffic lights will never 100% line up with greens your whole way. Always expect and adapt. If a wall is put up on your way, learn how to climb over it, walk around it, or go through it. Don't stop and turn around, that is simply not an option. If emotions begin to kick in, accept them, acknowledge them, but don't allow them to slow your progress. Either learn how to use them as fuel for your fire or disregard them entirely. Take on the words of the 16th century Japanese swordmaster Miyamoto Musashi. Whatever state of mind you are in, think only of cutting. Remember, in the world of business, it's almost fundamental to harness your killer instinct. Just like in the world of competitive sport, it's dog-eat-dog, fast-paced, and sometimes very, very cruel. 
Your opponents are committed to doing anything and everything in their power to ensure you don't succeed. Because they too have a killer instinct. They want to work harder than you, to be smarter than you, and they want to beat you to the top. Those who are always considering the success of others don't often make it themselves. And although it might not always be like this, keeping it in mind is a highly intelligent way to progress. By adapting to your obstacles, overcoming your emotions, choosing your battles, choosing the right time, knowing yourself, and knowing your opponent, you can become well and truly unbeatable. And finally, your killer instinct is not taboo or something that you should be afraid of. It's deeply rooted in the DNA of each and every one of us, and if used correctly, can make you a very dangerous individual to your opponents. Don't be afraid to discuss it. Get comfortable talking with others about winning, training to succeed, and what you wish to achieve. Some people will support you every step of the way. Keep them around, while others won't like the change. They'll bring you down, deconstruct your goals, and laugh about you with others. Cut them out of your life immediately. Losers focus on the winner, but the winner focuses on winning. Thank you for watching this video, Aluxer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next, or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.